Legendary League TV. You watching Legendary League TV. You watching Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. You watching Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. You watching Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. Legendary spell it with an I. And don't be asking me why. Everybody know I get fly. A town all around to the D. You watching Legendary League TV. Uh, you watching Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. 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 I'm gonna do a whisper. Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. You watching Legendary League TV. Legendary League TV. Uh, oh man. They got Lee Man on TV. What is going on here? <laughs> I know a lot of people is hot right now. They mad I'm on TV right now. They thought I was going to be somewhere bad. But we on my own show. Oh, man. Welcome to Legendary League TV through TV 33 WHPR. Welcome, y'all. We you know what I said we in Michigan doing our thing. And if y'all want to call in, y'all can call in 313-868-0342. 313-868-0351 if you got some questions, man. Welcome. My name is Legendary League, man. How y'all doing, man? Originally from Southfield, Michigan, 12 Mile, what up, though? What's going on with y'all, man? 12 Mile, Southfield Road, Southfield Lathan, what up, though? Southfield High, what's the deal? Original Cash Out Boys, I see y'all, Cash and Carry. <laughs> Original Cash Out Boys, y'all know who y'all is, man. What up, though? Spent a lot of time out in Joy Road, a lot of time out in Mac, a lot of time in Oak Park. Kalamazoo, what up, though? Highland Park, what up, though? Ooh. It's a lot of history in Highland Park. It's crazy seeing all these white people running around in Highland Park. Ain't it crazy? They jogging, they cartwheeling, and everything. We still scared going out. We scared to walk outside, man. White people running. They doing everything. They dancing out there, man. Shout out to Michigan, man. Michigan is the flyest people ever. No matter where I go, somebody knows somebody from Michigan. Are you from Michigan? My uncle, little sister, boyfriend, Baby cousin from Michigan, man. What up, though? Everybody want to say what up, though. Like, hey, what up, though? How y'all doing, man? Went to Southfield Lake for a minute, you know. Did my thing out there. Then I went to Harrison. Graduated from Harrison High School, Farmington Hills, Harrison. They about to take down my school, man. Like, they about to close down Harrison. I'm really mad about that, though, man. Harrison was some good times out there, though. You know, did my thing out there. I'm a 4.0 student since sixth grade. 4.0 since sixth grade. I am smart, you know. I am very intelligent out this thing. Uh, who's who among American scholars? Honoree, Hall of Famer, yeah. NYLC, yeah. So this legendary thing is is real, man. Legendary Lee TV is me talking about me and everything else that's legendary that I feel like talking about. Went to Harrison, graduated, you know. Got into 15 schools, maybe 15, 16. I was trying to get in Harvard, but that's we'll talk about that later, you dig? Wind up going to FAMU for a little minute. Salute to FAMU. Everybody that I know at FAMU. Classic, Kales. If y'all watching, what up, though? Salute to y'all. Went to FAM for a minute. Had to transfer, though. Had to get out that thing. I don't know what it is about these HBCUs, man, that either they stingy with the money or they don't got no money to give you or something. So I had to skirt. Get out that thing, man. Ended up at Georgia State University. Salute, salute to the Q's out there. Are you, are you, are you, are you? Good bros. 09 Zeta Theta living legend. Ugh, don't worry about it. Good bros, that is the only good bros. Graduated from Georgia State, but it wasn't easy, y'all. Y'all got a degree, y'all know what I'm talking about. It was not easy at all, but I made it through. I stuck with it and I got out there. Majored in public speaking. So I'm using my degree, as you can tell. Minor African American studies. Using my degree, as you can tell. But I'm getting my master's right now. And knowing myself. I'm going to repeat that. That's Jim's. 
I'm getting my master's and knowing me. You got to get your master's and knowing you. That's really the number one study of all time. School and all that's cool, but you got to get to know yourself out here. So I'm getting to know Lee, man. Looking good, healthy, and sexy out here, man. Doing my thing. Salute to this hat, too. <laughs> Only purpose pimps can wear this hat, man. What is a purpose pimp, Lee, man? Oh, man, I'm glad y'all asked that. Well, first and foremost, we got some merchandise for y'all, man. You know, Purpose Pimp Apparel. That is my clothing line, you dig? You want one of these? We got different colors for you. You know, they $30 a pop, you know what I'm saying? That ain't nothing too crazy. If you a Purpose Pimp, you'll rock this. So a Purpose Pimp definition, man. Well, first of all, you got to have a purpose, you know what I'm saying? And everybody has a purpose. Everybody has the same purpose, really, is to shine your light or to find where you shine. I'm going to repeat that. Everybody's purpose is to find where you shine. But some people stay in the dark, you know what I'm saying? And they get lost. They don't find where they shine. Whether you a chef, a cheerleader, a cook, a fireman, an artist, whatever you're doing, you got to find where you shine. But you got to pimp it. And people think that pimping is a bad word. No, it's really not. It's a player into making progress. Gems, repeat that, Lee, man. Player into making progress. So you got to pimp your purpose. Be in control of your purpose. Don't let it control you. Because if you, you can get scared of your purpose. You can get scared of your mission. Don't be scared of it. Chill. Pimp it. Be in control. And be in control of your own destiny. Be yourself master. You feel me? And that's what purpose pimping is. And then we multidimensional. A purpose pimp just don't do one thing. They try to tell young Lee man to just do one thing. Oh, you got to do one thing. You, you're going everywhere with it. But now they want to do what I'm doing. They see me on TV. Uh-oh. Lee man on TV. He about to make it. And it's funny. When you tell somebody to support you that know you, they claim they're your family. Or your friends, as soon as you say, I need some help, oh, they're gone, they're ghosts. They can't even hear you. What T. Grizzly say? I ask people to plug me, and they act like they didn't hear me. And I'm talking to y'all. Everybody claiming they support me and all this type of stuff. Ain't support it. Don't hop on Tone Lee Train, nah. Don't hop on Tone Lee Train, nah. Purpose Pimp is multidimensional, baby. So what do I do? Well, first and foremost, I do music. I'm an artiste. You know, I make music. You can go look me up on SoundCloud. Legendary Lee Man, L E G I N D A R Y. Legend with an I. Not like you clones, they spell it regularly. Everybody legendary. Now, if y'all haven't noticed, everything's legendary. But I got music. Go to iTunes, Legendary Lee Man. I'm celibate the default single. I'm celibate the default. If you don't know what default is, default are the people that always bring you down, that always want to just tear you down, just negative, stuck in the mindset that really. What, like, what is this mindset? You can't do this. They all negative. You can't, well, you can't do this. You happy? Why are you happy? You can't do that. They always negative. Stay away from default people. I'm celibate to them, you feel me? Music, that's one of my things. My favorite artists growing up, Rick James, <laughs> ODB, Mike Jackson, Snoop, Devin the Dude, Blade Ice Wood, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Mac Dre, DJ Quick. I go on for Devin the Dude, Michael Jackson. I go on all day, man. But now my favorite artist is Legendary Lee, man. You feel me? That's that self-love. Also in the clothes, like I told you, I got my own clothing line. I might be the flyest soul to ever touch this earth. I might be. I'm so crispy. They always want to, people always want to know what I'm wearing. Every time. What Lee man wearing? What he about to wear? What he, what he got on? They always want to know. So I started my own clothing line. Fashion. I love fashion. Comedian, as you can tell, I just love being me. Y'all think I'm a character? Hey, man, I get this from my family, dog. Like this ain't nothing new. Man, comedian, stand-up comic. I'd have performed at Uptown Comedy in Atlanta. I'd have performed at Laughing Skull Lounge, and I'm still doing my thing now. I'm on my platform, and I act. I've been doing background acting for a while. If you don't know what background acting is, you see the main actors in the movie. Them the people behind them, you know what I'm saying, the background people. But every time I did it, I stood out. I'm so crispy. I'm so cold with this thing, man. I knew I wasn't just going to be background. I was going to be the star one day. So one day I'm on Powers. That's a show. Just doing me. You know, they had me sitting on the couch with two females. They said I was looking like young Jimi Hendrix out here, young Jimmy. So I'm with two females just chilling. So the actor on the side of me, he like, man, they got you looking cool out here. So he looked at me like this, like he was mad at me. He the main actor. He like, damn, they got you looking cool. I said, yeah. So the director come over to me, he say, look, bro, I love everything about your look, man, but you taking the shine away from the main actor, so you got to stand behind the couch. I had to stand behind the couch because I was taking the shine away from the main actor, man. That's how strong my light is, man. So we acting. My biggest thing this far, my biggest role is Sweet Pea on Saints and Sinners. 
If you don't know what Saints and Sinners is, you sleep on Bounce TV. If you don't know what Bounce TV is and Saints and Sinners and you black, you slipping. But it's all good. Check it out. It's about the dirty, grimy, and the good side of the church. Now, let's be real, y'all. Church is cool. We like church. But it's some of the grimiest stuff going on in church. Now, let's not get it twisted. Everybody go there to get clean, but there's some stuff going on in there. You know, it's funny when people say, when the preachers be like, yeah, I want you to uh, donate to God. You know, God needs some money. Donate to God. I didn't know God was broke. When the last time you figured God was broke? I didn't. You, you got broke? I ain't know nothing about that. You take my money to get the walls done, that's cool. We take my money to do some weird stuff with little boys and all that. I don't know nothing about that, boy. Hey, you ain't taking my money to God. That ain't for God. So, Saints and Sinners on Bounce TV. I play Sweet P. Salute to Clifton Powell, one of the realest people I've ever met in my life, man. Salute to you, man. We're doing this campaign for me to get on Saints and Sinners Season 3 a consistent role. And that campaign is called We Want to See Sweet P. Let me pop my collar. We want to see Sweet Pea on Season 3. You can campaign right now. Go to swirlfilms.com. S-W-I-R-L-F-I-L-M-S.com. Hit contact. Let them know you want to see Sweet Pea on Season 3. It don't cost you nothing, bro. It don't cost you. Don't you want to see me on TV? You see me on TV now, but I'm expanding everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I do the acting thing, man, and I love it. You know, I love doing that. And I still play basketball. If you know my story, you know basketball is a love of mine, a real love of mine, man. I've been through a lot. People try to block your lead, man, with it. I played at Harrison. I played for Coach James Beverly. Coach, if you see this, James Beverly, man, I love you, man, for real. Like, if you alive, if you around, I hope you see this, man. I love you. You always told me, told you, you can go to the cup, you can go to the rack. Work on that short jumper. Work on that short jumper. I'm working on that short jumper. Shout out to Coach G, Coach Lil John. And y'all other coaches that try to block me, I hope every negative thing in life happens to y'all. And y'all know who I'm talking about. So basketball is still something I'm doing. I played in the ABA for a minute doing my thing. Oh, there it is. I just found some good news out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> basketball is a great thing for me. I'm still hooping. My favorite basketball player of all time is Isaiah Thomas. The first one, the bad boys, period. Everybody that came through the bad boys, some junkyard dog, Rasheed, Wallace, Ben, you know what I'm saying? Jerry Stackhouse. You feel me? All oh, y'all. You know, my favorite players right now is Draymond Green and Chris Doug. So we about to go to some rare footage of the Tone Lee basketball footage right now. Y'all want to see some Tone Lee footage of basketball? I do. We'll be right back. Squeeze. See that young play out there getting this thing all going there? Young Tony Lee out there, man. Goodness gracious, man. That's just a little snippet. We're going to get deep into that on the next show, man. But, hey, I'm hooping all the time, all the time, every time. So, like I said, I got a clothing line. It's well-purpose pimp apparel. But we need something for the females, you know? They can wear purpose pimping as well, but they got their own thing. And that's called Honey Queens. Uh-oh, look at that. Ain't that so sexy? That's so sexy. Shout out to the honey queens out there, man. Mother's Day coming up. Salute to my mama. I love you, baby. I love you, mama. OG, you know the G. Salute to you. I love you. So what is a honey queen? People ask me. <laughs> a honey queen, man, just a fly female, a boss female, independent-minded. She cold with it. Even right where she working at. She could be working at McDonald's, but she still got that mindset that she going to might own McDonald's. Or she might hire the boss. She bring value to you. You know what I'm saying? The honey queen brings value. She's sexy soul-wise and sexy on the outside. You dig? She treat herself like a trophy, 
then she treats you like the trophy. Because, man, I'm going to be real with y'all. Look, man, this for all my men out there. Women are the trophies. We all know that women are very powerful. But we got to start treating ourselves like the trophy, for real. We are spending money, chasing after these females. Oh, that woo-woo. Oh, yeah, I got it. I spent all this. Blah, blah, blah. Just to do what? Have sex, bro? And you might not even get the sex, bro. You doing all this stupid stuff for what? She purpose pipping you. We the trophy, bro. Don't forget that. So Honey Queen know that. She just don't stand behind you. She stand on the side of your grind with you. She cold. Sweet on the inside, sweet on the outside. Treat herself like the trophy. I was raised by women. You know what I'm saying? I was raised by Honey Queens. And I don't. I hate when people say that a woman cannot raise a good man. That's a lie, bro. That's a lie. I was raised by strong women. They treated me tougher than men, honestly. Taught me how to fight, cut grass. Taught me about the sex game. Taught me about everything to keep me hip to where I am now. So you saying women can't raise a man? You a fool. Whoever's saying that, man, you a fool. Happy Mother's Day to the honey queens out there. But the number one thing about a honey queen is she fine without that makeup. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> she fine without that makeup. Ladies, why do y'all wear so much makeup? I don't. I don't get it. Like, why do y'all wear so much makeup? A little bit is cool to get glammed up, but I talk to a lot of females. I'm like, why do you wear makeup? Uh, you know, I just want to get, you know, I just want to feel sexy. I just want to look good and all this. So you don't look sexy without it? Um, it just, it enhances me. That doesn't make no sense. Even if you do look like somebody uncle without your makeup, I'd rather you like somebody uncle than somebody then it's a question mark. If I got to look at you, if I'm talking to you without his makeup, and I got to look like, hmm. Is that a man? Or if I got to ask that, then you already turning me off, baby. Take that makeup off. You might look like somebody uncle, but this the kicker, though. 99% of men out here, they going to date you anyway. They don't care. Take the makeup off. They don't, want, they don't want to be looking at a corpse, looking like you hopped out of a coffin. Don't scare me. I want to be cool with you. Don't spook me. Take all that makeup off, baby. <laughs> I know some females hot right now. Oh, my God. It is what it is, man. I think I got some calls coming in. How does this work? Oh, I'm do I'm messing up. Right here. Oh. Oh, I got line three. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Then what? Hello? It's dots right there. I mean I got calls, right? Oh, never mind. I thought Lima had some calls. I'm, I'm learning. Hey, first TV show. Anyways, <laughs> stop wearing all that makeup, females, because it's scaring me. I hear... <laughs> Please stop. And the world want to make you up anyway. That's what this world is built on anyway. Like, it's already fake. It's a facade. And you already going into the Matrix anyway. Stay out the Matrix. Like, forget about all that. Like, be natural. Be raw and be you. That's my opinion. I'm going to leave it like that. And speaking of the world, man... It's pretty dangerous out here. A lot of wild stuff is going on. Some pretty dark times, you know. Some pretty dark times. But the number one dangerous place in America is Chuck E. Cheese. Why is Chuck E. Cheese so... Like, why do people fight at Chuck E. Cheese? What makes you fight at Chuck E. Cheese? Like, for, and it's grown people. It's not kids fighting. It's been a mis mysterious question. What makes people fight at Chuck E. Cheese? Is it because you see a big rat kicking and dancing and walking and jumping around and everything? Is that what makes you angry? Or you see a gorilla just crump dancing on stage. I used to be scared of them animals. On, I, I really am, might be still scared of them animals on stage. I don't know. They look real to me. I think one of them had a Rolex on last time I seen. They not fake. So I don't know what makes people fight at Chuck E. Cheese, but we about to shoot this video or show you this video. Let's find out. Why do people fight at Chuck E. Cheese? We'll be back. Legendary Lee TV. Squeaks. It's a popular family restaurant where kids can play and families enjoy pizza together. Chuck E. Cheese's is not the kind of place you would expect cops to be called. But at a number of restaurants, fun kitty parties have turned into chaos. And Lisa Guerrero says it's often the adults causing the problems. For 40 years, Chuck E. Cheese's restaurants have been thrilling children. To the right, everybody. To the left. Serving up pizza, arcade games, and amusement rides at more than 550 family friendly centers around the world. But it's not always fun and games. 
Some kiddie parties have turned into battlegrounds, and it's the adults that are behaving badly. We have several injured people here at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, we are on our way right there. All right, there's a fight that broke out. We have people fighting, punching. I need a cop, I need an ambulance, I need everything. In Parma, Ohio, police say a mob of customers stormed into the kitchen and attacked Chuck E. Cheese's employees. In Miami, all hell broke loose as customers slugged it out with each other. Can you believe women pulling hair as the children run for cover? And in Manchester, Connecticut, Lamar Wallace took out his cell phone when he saw customers climbing tables and duking it out in the middle of the Chuck E. Cheese's where his little niece was having her birthday party. When I saw it happening, I was just like, oh my God, like, is this really happening with kids around and it's Chuck E. Cheese? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my eyes. So why does it keep happening at these places? This could be one reason. You may be surprised to learn that at many Chuck E. Cheese's, alcohol is served to adults. Parenting expert Dr. Gail Lewis. This is an atmosphere that's chaotic. Children running around, screaming. With the alcohol, I think that that just adds to the stress, it adds to the capacity to act out. Chuck E. Cheese has a policy of serving only two alcoholic beverages per adult, so we decided to test out that policy. We say happy, you say birthday. I went to a Chuck E. Cheese's in Long Island, New York to attend a children's birthday party. How about Corona Light? Corona Light for both of them? Yes. Alrighty, sounds good to me. Thank you. A short time later, my two beers came. Thank you very much. Then I asked for two more beers, double the limit. Incredibly, I'm told how to get around their two drink limit. We just need someone else's ID. Someone else's ID, and then I can order two more, but just with somebody else. So, Scott, can I get your ID? Sure enough. A short time later, I received beers number three and four. So as long as somebody else yeah. gives you their ID, then you yeah. can still order more, but it has to be on somebody else's ID. Yeah. After two. Yes. Time to ask management some questions. We know you have a policy of only serving two alcoholic beverages per adult, but I was, I was able to, to order can, four today. We can, I'll give you the number that you guys can call. Them. My message would be do not drink at a children's birthday party. Pretty I don't, simple. Well, I don't think it's the only thing that can... So you mean to tell me that people fighting at Chuck E. Cheese because of brew? Because of beer? I'm a professional beer drinker. I like beer, man. I ain't never fought nobody at Chuck E. Cheese off of some beer, man. Have you fought somebody off? Does beer make you want to fight somebody, bro? That's not the reason. I don't know what it is. We're going to find this out. This is not the last time we're going to talk about this topic, man. But, hey, stop fighting at Chuck E. Cheese, man. So I just dropped a video recently, guys, called Bourbon Bowl. I don't know if everybody ever you've seen Waterboy. If y'all seen Waterboy, you should be watching Waterboy if you haven't seen Waterboy. Bobby Boucher is one of my favorite characters of all time. Just dropped the video on YouTube. It's doing pretty well. We're going to show that in a minute. I just got one question for y'all, though. You remember when Bobby Boucher showed up at halftime and the, and the mud dogs went to Bourbon Bowl? Do you? Do you? Do y'all remember that? Because I sure do. Legendary Elite TV. Bourbon Bowl video is dropping right now. <laughs> Squeeze. Is out there clicking up. All the clones are getting together. They all sound alike, they looking alike. We don't know who's who. We don't know what's going on. Does anybody have an idea how we can win? Hey, y'all remember the time when Lee Man performed in a fur, a fur coat, and he had some cowboy boots on, going crazy. Y'all remember that? Then everybody started wearing cowboy boots after that. <laughs> That was legendary. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Everybody started wearing cowboy boots after he started doing it, man. Remember the time when Lee Mad bagged that cold female? Her mama was cold, and he bagged her cold grandma? <laughs> he bagged all three of them, man. Remember that? You get the granny, the daughter, and the granddaughter? That's legendary, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember that. I remember that. Remember the time when he made Tuesday cool? He was the first one to start talking about Tuesday and everybody started clowning him. Even that one, uh, that one sissy boy. I forgot his name. He, yeah, I forgot that sissy boy name. But yeah, they all clowned him. I remember when Lee Man exposed him. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he made Tuesday cool, man. Pleasure.
Nobody ever leave me. Okay, but let me get it, get it. And he was seen the one. Nobody ever leave me. 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 What is he talking about? What? Huh? Remember when Legendary League Man showed up at halftime and the mud dogs won the bourbon bowl? Do you? Do you? Remember the time Bobby Boucher yeah, showed up at halftime and, 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 and the mud dogs won the bourbon bowl? Do you? Okay. Do you? I do. I do. I do. I do. Ugh, legendary. Ugh. I'm feeling good on a Tuesday. Scored another touchdown like you way. Need an extra point. Play at the play. Fourth quarter bourbon bowl. Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. Fourth quarter bourbon bowl. Bobby Boucher. I'm like a coach to these water boys. Legendary making all the noise. It ain't no looking in my playbook. These flames take the style. They some damn crews. Bobby Boucher. <laughs> Fourth quarter bourbon bowl. Hey man, if you want to see the rest of that video, y'all go to YouTube. Legendary Lee Man. L E G I N D A R Y Lee L E E M A N Man. Find me on IG. Legendary Lee TV. L E G I N D A R Y L E T V SoundCloud same thing you know what I'm saying we just promoting me man I got business cards and all that we got businesses clothing we purpose pimping we looking good smelling good brushing our teeth y'all do the same man it felt so good to do this I hope you enjoyed this man because I enjoyed this whole time man pimp your purpose don't let your purpose pimp you you're watching Legendary Lee TV squeeze Legendary Lee TV you watching Legendary Lee TV you watching Legendary Lee TV, Legendary Lee TV. You watching Legendary Lee TV, Legendary Lee TV. You watching Legendary Lee TV, Legendary Lee TV.